of, uh, to draw pastors, congregations close together, and as a brainstorm ideal that Pastor Sam had, and, and, and there's a little history on me and Pastor Sam. We, we know each other way before we got to Elgin. We both pastored in Columbus, Texas, and uh, he was, we were a part of the Minister Alliance there. And so one of the things that when I was appointed here a year ago, he gave me a call when he found out that I was appointed here in Elgin. And so I knew this was a place to be. Thank you, Pastor Sam, for continuing to be a friend. Thank you for being here. And again, our whole purpose is to draw our community together. It's not about anything else but unity and the love of our community because we care about our community. Amen? Amen. We, we might be in a different denomination, but there's one thing that we have in common is the love of Jesus Christ and the love of neighbor as yourself. Amen? Amen. Greetings. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we prepare ourselves for the coming of your Son, fill our hearts and our lives with praise. Grant that we may be just and merciful, ready to help in the needs of our neighbors, and conscious of the great love for all the world. Fill the Christian family with the spiritual gift of forgiveness, patience, mutual love, unending joy, all these are, are the answers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Pastor Harris will come and lead us in the call to worship. Got it. If you'll turn to uh, page 758 in the blue books for those of us who are Lutherans and Methodists, just open up in your hymnal to page 758. Here's a highlight for you. I, I, how ecumenical this community is, is they hired a Methodist uh, youth director. So um, it, it's good to be here tonight. Amen. Thank you. So uh, Sam asked me to, to say that the bold letter words is y'all's response and the not so bold words are, are, are the leader's response. So, uh, and we start up here at the top where it says, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes shall stumble and fall. One thing I asked of the Lord that I, will I seek after. The Lord will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble, will conceal me under the cover of his tent, and will set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies around about me, and I will offer sacrifices to the Lord's hand with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. face, your face, O Lord, I see. Hide not your face from me, turn not your servant away in anger, for you have been my help. Cast me not off, forsake me not, O Lord, my salvation. If my father and mother should forsake me, the Lord would take me up. Take me your, take, a uh, teach, sorry. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for all witnesses are risen against me, and they breathe out violence. 
I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Thank you, Pastor Harris, and welcome to Elgin. We have a song. If you turn to page 211, uh, last week your, your pastor led all the music, and he did a beautiful job. In this house, I do not sing, so I'm encouraging you guys to help us with this song. Page 211, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Thank you, choir. You sound lovely. Uh, now we move on to the Old Testament reading by Pastor Sam. When you've watched someone grow in the faith and you've watched them move from part-time pastor to thinking about pastor to full-time pastor, I tell you, it is, a, it is something you should not ever miss to watch someone grow into a full-blown, wonderful, incredible pastor. Isaiah, the prophet, Chapter 11, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a branch, it will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will de give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness a sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the goat and the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and the little children will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, and the young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den. The young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy. Here ends the reading. All right, quiet. You got your lungs all and your vocal cords all warmed up. We have another song on page 585, This Little Light of Mine. Sounding better and better. My dad is saying getting gooder and gooder. All right, we're up to another scripture reading by Pastor Sam. Get your steps in today. You hadn't changed it.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 1. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after they had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give him a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name of Jesus. One more time, choir. Page 219. What child is this? one thing off the program and forgive me it's the offering for for the ministerial allowance it's here to support uh, the people in our community we have been uh, paying bills we have been helping people with their rent so your money has been well spent that you donate is actually affecting our community those who need it the most we have a system set up at mama rye baptist church with reverend ward and and his staff that go take care of that every first friday of each month and so we are doing our part. With your help, we can continue to do our part for our community, for those who are less fortunate and need help. Amen? So this offering is taken in a purpose for that, not for this church, not for, for your church, but for the local ministerial alliance. We have our communion stewards come down. As John plays something softly, We'll be, we'll be passing the, the hat.
be seated. As I was reflecting on what to say to tonight, Advent season is a season that we prepare our hearts for the birth and celebration of Jesus Christ. And, I'm, and I've been a Methodist all my life, and, and so Advent season has taken on a different spin every year in my life. It depends on where you are in your life. And this year, it took a spin of, of how we are part of a great plan, a plan that is not predicated on us, a plan that if I make a plan, I'm making for a certain outcome that will benefit me. If you make a plan, uh, whatever group or organization you, you're making a plan for is going to benefit them. But as I reflect in this Advent season, that the plan that God had wasn't predicated on you or me. It was predicated on his love. So John 3.16 has always been my go-to scripture. If I go to a church and somebody says, well, you need to get up and say something or preach, I use John 3.16. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not die or perish because they will have everlasting life. That, that scripture has took a new meaning to me in this Advent season. As we reflect on the scripture readings and the things that God put in place seven, eight hundred years before the actual birth of Jesus Christ, told through Isaiah and the prophets of the coming of Jesus, the plan was bigger than us. He used Mary, he used Joseph, he used people to get his plan done for us because he knew we was a stiff-necked people. He knew we needed to be a savior. He needed a way to make us righteous in his sight. So we became a part of a plan, not a selfish plan. It was for us. So when, you know, like I said earlier, when we make plans, it benefits us or the committee or the group that we're making the plan in, 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 about. It's about benefiting us. But God shows us through his selfishness. His plan is about love. His plan is about growing people together, about growing communities together. It's about accepting and loving people. It's about, it's about forgiveness. It's about redemption. It talks about how, how, how in the beginning uh, we was uh, striking Isaiah 53. It talks about he was bruised for our iniquities. He was already talking about what his son had to go through to save us. To make us righteous in his eyes. It's nothing that you can do, nothing that I can do to make us righteous. Only through his son, Jesus Christ, that we are made righteous in his sight and accepting him as our Lord and Savior. This plan that he had is bigger than 2022. This plan was put in place in Genesis. It's bigger than, than anything we can read in the Bible. It keeps going on and on. The scripture keeps showing itself alive and moving and forever changing and forever drawing people to God or forever running people from God. This plan was put in place because God loved us. Not that we loved him, but because he loved us. So this Advent season, I've been reflecting on how much he loved us. So 316, John 316 has took a new meaning in my heart. What are you reflecting on in this Advent season? What is in you that is changing? What is, what is in you that God is trying to work out in you? What is it in you that God is doing in this Advent season as we prepare to celebrate <laughs> the living and risen God? The one who came, he keeps telling us, I didn't come on my own accord. I come because the Father sent me. Because God loved him so much, us so much. He sent the perfect gift. The perfect sacrifice, the perfect lamb that was slaughtered for all of us. Without him shedding his blood, without him going to the cross, without him laying his life down for us, none of us would have the right to everlasting life. It's not about what you can give or what you can do. It's about what you can receive. And all he wants for Christmas is your heart. All he wants is your admiration and love back. 
This Advent season has taught me and is teaching me through my grandson. First church, know my grandson, Messiah, was born, was born with spina bifida, and he has a series of surgeries. And when you, you can ask some of my members, when he's in the church, he's the loudest one in the church. He gives me such joy because his suffering, he does it with a smile. His suffering brings me strength when I know and I hope in God healing in him. He's getting ready to start school. And my, my daughter is so nervous. He's three years old and there's a lot of things he can't do, can't walk. He's rolling in a wheelchair. But it's, it's such a joy. When I, I'm telling you this story because you may be going through something in your life. But it's always joy because we know who we belong to. There's no confusion when you accept and understand that this plan was put in place for us. So my joy is found in my smile in my grandson's face. Even in his surgery, in his pain, he's always smiling. And so that's the least I can do. Whatever I got to deal with, I'm not dealing with it on my own. The plan was for us to accept and love him. And he said, "Take uh, the, the scripture says, give me your yoke because my burdens are light. In other words, if I learn to give everything to God and I trust him with my whole heart and I love him with all my heart and love my neighbor as myself, I'm become righteousness in his, in his sight. No matter what I've done or what I used to do, I'm righteous in his sight. This is the plan of salvation for us all. For us all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a closing prayer that I would love for us to say together. It's in the program. Holy God, the mysteries of the eternal word to the flesh among us, Jesus Christ. And this is the message of an angel. The virgin prayer, praise her fire from the service at your will. Fill the light of your spirit. She becomes the temple of the word. Strengthen us by the example of her humility. And that we all be ready to give you will. And become our lives in this Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a closing prelude. I love people, right? That's my biggest gift. Henry, my new friend over here, uh, has made me some barbecue ribs and, and, and beans. And I'm not, y'all already ate pancakes. So, <laughs> so, so I'm just telling y'all this to, to let you know I'm in a hurry to get to, to home so I can warm up the, the ribs and eat some of, that, uh, some of that barbecue and beans. So it's about making relationships. It's about loving each other. And seeing people where they are and accepting them where they are. Receive this benediction. God's will, nothing more, and nothing else. You are officially dismissed. Amen. See you next Wednesday. No. 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 I'm not sharing. That's okay. <laughs>